do you often drink orange juice? But did you know that the orange peels from your juice could actually change an entire ecosystem? No, this isn't a mistake. In Costa Rica, they dumped about 26.5 million pounds of orange peels, which is roughly the weight of two Eiffel Towers, into the forest. Trucks worked day and night, no one tried to hide it. And even the National Park staff approved of this trash dumping. It was a project that cost almost nothing, but it ended up teaching scientists and the world a huge lesson. Ready, let's dive into today's documentary. Costa Rica is often praised as the green paradise of Central America. The country covers just 0.3% of Earth's land area, but it holds a staggering 6% of the world's biodiversity. That's pretty mind-blowing. Costa Ricans are extremely proud of their reputation as one of the world's greenest and most environmentally conscious nations, and honestly, who wouldn't be? But imagine this from 1940 to 1983. Costa Rica's ancient forests were cut down in massive numbers, and just between 1990 and 2005, Costa Rica lost another 427,000 acres of forest, which is about the size of the city of London. Today, Costa Rica still has about 6.5 million acres of natural forest covering over 51% of the country. That sounds like good news. But in Guanacaste province, more than a third of the 730,000 acres were once completely cleared. After decades of overgrazing, the land was exhausted, young trees couldn't survive, and thick African Jaragua grass took over. This invasive grass choked out native plants and became fuel for wildfires during the dry season. Economic pressure made things worse, as banana pineapple and coffee plantations expanded chemicals, spilled into rivers, and the fragile ecosystem took a beating. While Costa Rica's forests were struggling to recover, another problem appeared orange peels. Right on the northern edge of the reserve was Del Oro, a massive orange juice company. Every year, the juice industry squeezes out hundreds of millions of liters of juice. Did you know that almost 50% of an orange's weight is just peel and pulp each harvest? Del Oro piled up thousands of tons of orange peels, forming bright orange walls. Burying them would take up too much land. Burning them would cause pollution and waste huge amounts of energy. Turning them into animal feed was too expensive and only a few companies dared to try. While Del Oro was struggling to figure out what to do, two ecologists from the University of Pennsylvania, Daniel Jansen and Winnie Hallwax saw a bold opportunity. In 1997, they proposed a win-win deal. If Del Oro donated a patch of forest bordering the northern edge of Guanacaste Conservation Area to the National Park, the company would be allowed to dump its massive piles of orange peels onto the park's worn-out grasslands completely free of charge. The contract included strict rules. First, only pure orange peel and pulp could be dumped with absolutely nothing else. That sounds simple, but in reality, it was a huge challenge. Del Oro had to guarantee that not a drop of pesticide or farm chemicals touched any of their orange groves. Even a small mistake could turn the whole plan into an environmental disaster. That's not all. All orange pulp had to be washed and have the limonene oil removed, a fragrant compound that can kill young trees. This step was expensive, but luckily, limonene oil is valuable in the cleaning industry, which turned waste into a moneymaker. There were more conditions. The peels could only be dumped on already destroyed grazing lands where the soil was so poor, even cattle had abandoned it. Just six months after the project started, the orange peel dump site became a shocking site. Researcher Timothy Truer from Princeton University recalled the orange peels had turned into a 12 to 16-inch layer of black soil, smelling sharply sour and thick with fly larvae, like a bubbling cauldron of mud. Imagine over 26.5 million pounds of orange peels, the weight of two Eiffel Towers slowly fermenting in the tropical heat. The sour smell traveled hundreds of yards and the air was thick with flies. Anyone walking by had to hold their breath. People living within one mile and a half started worrying about disease outbreaks, especially the Mediterranean fruit fly, a pest that can destroy over 200 kinds of crops from mangoes and guavas to citrus. Local newspapers called the site a giant breeding ground, stirring up fear and public outrage. Doesn't it feel like things were spinning out of control at the same time the orange juice industry was fiercely competitive? 
In the 1990s, Costa Rica exported over $900 million worth of oranges each year, and the average cost to process orange waste was $40 to $50 per ton. While other factories spent millions building waste treatment systems, Del Oro got to dump for free in the national park. Their biggest rival, Tico Fruit, spent over $5 million on their own waste system and were furious. In August 1998, they filed a lawsuit accusing Del Oro of polluting Guanacaste National Park. The lawsuit claimed the environmental agreement was just a disguised dumping permit highlighted that orange peels contained delimonene, an oil that could seep into groundwater, and warned that Mediterranean fruit flies could explode in numbers threatening the entire national orange industry. Isn't that a direct hit to public fears? Tico Fruit didn't stop at the courts. They launched a nationwide media campaign with radio ads, sensational headlines, and primetime TV shows. Even though the Rainforest Alliance and many ecologists said the project was safe, public outrage won. In the end, Costa Rica's Supreme Court canceled the 20-year contract and even the head of the environmental agency who supported the project was fired. After the ruling, Del Oro obviously had to find another solution for the mountain of leftover orange peels. According to internal records and local news, the company gradually started working with composting plants to turn the peels into eco-certified compost after extra steps to remove harmful microbes. They also signed deals with fruit farms to use the peels as mulch instead of burying or burning them. You'd think the story ended there, right? Nearly 20 years after the lawsuit, most people had forgotten about the orange peel dump. But for ecologist Daniel Yanzen, the story wasn't over. He sent former Princeton student Timothy Troyer back to check. Troyer remembered his first visit I walked around for half an hour and couldn't even find the old sign. The once barren land was now covered in thick vines, so dense he couldn't see the two-yard tall marker. Not giving up, Troyer came back a week later and was stunned when he stepped into the old dump site. Just a few hundred yards from the outside, but it was like night and day. Here was a young tropical forest with a canopy so thick, sunlight barely reached the ground. It's hard to believe, Truer said, that the only difference between these two patches of land is orange peels. Over the next three years, the Princeton team did a careful survey. Above-ground plant mass increased by 176%, the number of tree species tripled compared to the control area, and the soil was rich and fertile. A giant fig tree nearly three feet across needed three people to wrap their arms around it. A tera, a small dog-sized forest animal, showed up proof that the food chain was coming back to life. Who could have guessed that a pile of stinky waste would become such a green paradise? And it's not just pretty. The young forest is actually a negative cost carbon sink, meaning it soaks up carbon dioxide for almost no money. Research published in Restoration Ecology and cited in Nature found that regrown forests can store 11 times more carbon than old forests, which is a surprising advantage in this age of global climate change. Troyer concluded, we're not asking companies to dump waste everywhere, but if managed scientifically, agricultural byproducts could be the key to restoring forests. Hard to believe, right? By now, you're probably wondering, how did that pile of stinky orange peels turn into a forest? This is the million-dollar question that even Princeton scientists admit they can't fully answer. But they do have some theories. First, the orange peels acted as a smothering blanket wiping out the invasive African grass Hyperinia rufa. This grass was the main reason the grasslands stayed barren since it sucked up all the nutrients and fueled wildfires in the dry season. When buried under orange peels, the grass couldn't photosynthesize and died off, which opened an ecological window for native trees to grow. Yes, the orange peels did what people couldn't. That's not all. Orange peels contain three key nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the same recipe as any bag of fertilizer. As thousands of tons of peels broke down, they turned into a nutrient feast for the soil which had been exhausted by centuries of grazing. The result was that young trees had rich soil to grow fast. There's more. Costa Rica is near the equator, with average temperatures around 82 degrees Fahrenheit year-round and distinct wet and dry seasons, perfect for fast decomposition and strong plant growth. Another stroke of luck was that the dump site was far from rivers, so there was no water pollution. 
If they had done this elsewhere, the results could have been totally different. What do you think would happen if orange peels were dumped near your local river? And don't forget the orange peels in this project were carefully treated. Limonene oil was removed and no pesticides were used. Otherwise, they would have become biological poison instead of natural fertilizer. If Costa Rica's story shows us the hidden power of orange waste in restoring forests, that's just one piece of a much bigger orange universe. Yes, those slimy, sour orange peels we usually throw in the trash are now being turned into materials for a whole range of 21st century green technologies. First, think about the scale. Every year, the world produces about 34.4 billion pounds of citrus waste, which is almost half the weight of all harvested oranges and other citrus fruits. Instead of disappearing into landfills today, scientists are turning this waste into biofuel using high-intensity, low-temperature microwave technology. The result is that the liquid produced can replace some fossil fuels and wood-reducing pressure to cut down forests. See your morning glass of orange juice could hold the key to a sustainable energy future. That's not all. Italian designers amazed the world with the Feel the Peel project, a dome-shaped machine nearly 10 feet tall and weighing over 4,400 pounds able to hold up to 1,500 fresh oranges on its roof. When a customer orders juice, the oranges roll down a spiral chute, get sliced, and squeezed. Instantly, the peels drop into a grinder or dried ground into fine powder, and mixed with PLA, a bioplastic made from cornstarch. This mix feeds a built-in 3D printer that makes a cup on the spot. When you're done, the cup can be composted, which closes a perfect zero-waste loop. It doesn't stop in Italy. In Spain, researchers at the Valencia Institute of Plastics Technology found a way to turn orange peels into bioplastic using enzymes. Special enzymes break down cellulose and hemicellulose, turning the peels into biomonomers, which are then molded into biodegradable plastic bottles. The raw material cost is almost zero since all the input is orange waste that would otherwise cost money to dispose of. The final product is as strong as peat plastic but breaks down in just a few months. In Milan, the startup Krill Design took a more artistic approach. They use the peels of just two Sicilian oranges dry and grind them, then mix with bioplastic to make 3D printable filament. The result is a unique desk lamp with a gentle orange scent, warm yellow light, and fully compostable when no longer needed. The project raised over $40,000 on Kickstarter, proving that organic waste can become high-end products and even a symbol of sustainable living. And Japanese researchers have gone even further. At the University of Tokyo, they pressed waste powder from orange peels, onion skins, cabbage leaves, and banana peels into building materials. The surprise was that cabbage leaves created material three times stronger than concrete. Its cheap resists mold and insects and holds its shape for up to four months outdoors. Can you imagine a day when city streets are lined with houses built from orange peels? If a pile of stinky orange peels can turn into a lush green forest, what do you think we should do with the millions of tons of food waste around the world? Share your thoughts below. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss more amazing stories from nature.